thinking of what kind of meals to prepare every day sometimes can be tough. Every so often, I feel that way and I'm sure you may feel that way too. And in today's video, I will show you how to prepare three dishes for less than $10 Canadian. With the portion that I'm showing you, it will feed three adults and three children with some left over after. If you are new here and you are looking for more video like this, don't forget to press the subscribe button for more delicious homemade recipes. Okay, let's get started. The ingredients that I'm going to show you is super easy to find. These five chicken legs, I purchased them for $6.33 Canadian. And for this daikon, I got it for $1.69 Canadian. I usually buy two pounds bag of carrots. In this recipe, we only going to need one, so this would cost about 20 cents. These are dry shrimps. You can pick them up from any Asian grocery store and the portion that we're going to use would cost about one dollar. The way first thing that we're going to do, we're going to soak the dry shrimp in room temperature water until we need to use it. This is five whole chicken legs. It weighs about five pounds. After we clean the chicken legs, we're going to chop each chicken leg into five pieces. And to chop the chicken leg, you need a really big knife, just like this one. You can pick them up at any Asian grocery store. In most Asian houses, they always have these big knives. So we always have it so we can chop all the meat that we're going to cook. You can chop them in whichever way and whichever size you like. You can chop them into three pieces. But in today's video, I'm showing you that I'm chopping them into five pieces. I like to chop them smaller into five pieces like this, so it will be easier and faster you can cook them. After you're done chopping them, you're going to put them back into the big bowl. And here we're going to separate the chicken leg that we just chopped. You can separate about one pound and a half of chicken legs that we chopped, but try to pick the one that has less meat on it. We are separating the chicken into two portions. One small portion is for the daikon soup, and the bigger bowl portion is for the fried chicken. In this small bowl here, it has less meat and have more bone, which will be good for the soup that we're going to make. And as you can see in this big bowl, it has more meat on the chicken. To fry a really delicious tasty chicken, I'm going to show you some simple ways how you can do that. Two teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoon of sugar and half teaspoon of black ground pepper. Stir and mix all the ingredients together before you pour the whole thing into the chicken. You can pour the whole thing into the chicken legs and after you go going to use your hand to marinate the chicken. You can marinate the chicken for about 30 seconds and after you are going to leave it on the side for now. With these simple ingredients, it will give the chicken some flavors by the time we need to fry them. After we done marinate the chicken, next we're going to boil some water. We're going to boil 3 liters of water on medium heat until we get all the other ingredients ready. And here is the daikon, we're going to cut both ends and after we're going to peel it. We are going to peel both the daikon skin and the carrot skin. And with the daikon, we are going to cut it into two portions. 
half of the portion we are going to use it to make the daikon chicken soup and for the other portion we are going to use it to make the daikon and carrot salad you can cut the daikon in half and after cut them in half again to make things easier for you to cut you're going to flip it back to the board just like i do it and after you're going to cut it about half inch thick but if you choose to cut it bigger or smaller, that is up to you. And after, you're going to put it on a plate for now while we're getting other ingredients ready. And for the other half of the daikon and the carrot, we're going to save it and we're going to make the salad later. These are the green onions that I grow in my backyard. We're going to slice the green onions and these green onions is what we're going to use for the daikon chicken soup. And in the portion of the green onions, you can put whatever amount that you like. You can put less or more, that is up to you. For me, I cut up about 3 to 4 tablespoons of green onions and I save the rest by wrapping it and put it back into the fridge. Now all the ingredients that we need to make the daikon chicken soup is all ready. And here is the dry shrimps. You can drain out the water and after clean it a couple times. And by now the water that we were boiling while we are getting all the ingredients ready should be almost boiled. On high heat, bring the water to boil and after, you can add the dry shrimp that we soak. After you add in the dry shrimps, you're going to wait again until the water is boiling before you add in the chicken. Anytime that you are going to cook any raw meat in the broth, you have to make sure that the water is boiling. This way, the chicken will cook through really fast and also, it will prevent your chicken from getting spoiled while cooking. While the chicken is boiling, we're going to add some flavor. One tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon of chicken powder. One tablespoon of sugar. If you like less salt or less sugar, you can adjust to that but this one is perfect for me. You're going to cook it on high heat and bring the broth to boil. From the beginning always, you will always see the scum and the bubbles that is floating on the top. You want to scoop those bubbles and those scums out so your broth is more clean and clear. After you scoop all the bubbles and the scum out, you're going to let the broth boil on high heat for 3 minutes. And after 3 minutes on boil, you're going to lower the heat on medium heat and cook it for the next 15 minutes on medium heat. It usually takes longer to cook the meat, so that is why we're going to cook the meat first for 15 minutes on medium heat before you add in the daikons. And while we are waiting, we are going to make our daikon and carrot salad. We're going to shred both carrots and the daikon. I use a Jillian pillar, you can pick them up at any Asian grocery store. You can shred the carrot and the daikon with it and it will get a really long strand from using the Jillian Pillar. After you're done shredding the carrot, you're going to put it into the bowl. And the same thing, we're going to use the Jillian Pillar to shred the daikon. I'm going to show you two ways. One way is to shred it, and the other way, we're going to thinly slice it with design. 
The way first thing that we're going to do, we're going to shred the daikon about halfway into the daikon size. You can shred the bottom so it will get the even log shape. The side that we are shredding it down to is about one inch and a half diameter, but you can shred it smaller, that is up to you. And here is the second style, you're going to cut it in half. And after you're cutting it in half, you're going to thinly slice the daikon. And because we are using the uh, Jillian pillar to shred the daikon, the daikon is now have the dented on the daikon. And so when you slice them, you'll see that design. And here I'm shredding the daikon smaller so you can see, so you could get the smaller side of the half moon. I'm just showing you a couple options that you can cut your daikon, but you can do whichever way you like. You can put the shredded daikon and the carrot into the same bowl. And next, we will use some salt to soften the daikon and the carrot. You're going to use one teaspoon of salt. And after, you're going to use your hand to squeeze the salt into the daikon and the carrots so there will be some water and the carrot and the daikon will shrink down. Put it on the side for now and next we're going to get all the ingredients ready to make our sauce for the salad. In this clip it looks like there is a lot of garlic but those are small pieces so put four cloves of regular size garlics and two shallots. You can thinly slice the garlics and the shallots. After you done thinly slice both of them, you're going to set it on the side for now in a small bowl. And here is the daikon and the carrot. When you leave it for a bit, there is some water. So you're going to pour that water out. You remember the salt that we used to put in there. You don't want to rinse the salt out, you just leave the salt in there. You only want to pour the water out. Now we will make the sauce for the salad. Two tablespoons of fish sauce. Three tablespoons of white vinegar. And you're going to leave the water and the sugar to put last. And now you can add the garlic and the shallot. You're going to put the garlic and the shallot now, so this way it will calm down the smell of the garlic and the shallot. Mix and stir and leave it for one minute before you add all the other ingredients. After one minute, now you can add the sugar and the water. Three tablespoons of sugar. Three tablespoon of water. Mix and dissolve the sugar and all the ingredients together. My family don't eat a lot of spicy food, but if you would like to put some red chili, you can do so. And now we're going to pour the sauce into the shredded daikon and the carrots. And after, you're going to use something firm to stir and combine all the ingredients together. And after, you stir and combine all the ingredients together for 30 seconds and it should be done. Now, you can leave it on the side for now. And here is the chicken broth that we've been boiling on medium heat for 15 minutes. You're going to turn the heat on high heat and add in the daikons. After you add in the daikon, you're going to turn the heat back to high heat and bring it to boil before you lower the heat back to medium. Daikon usually have these strong smells. I cannot explain, but you have to eat the daikon to know it. To calm down the smell of the daikon, 
you're going to cook it on medium heat for 20 minutes so the daikon is softer before you start to eat them. While we are waiting, we're going to preheat the cooking oil to 180 degrees Celsius before we start to cook our chicken. And here I'm going to show you from scratch on what to use to fry the crispy chickens. 3 quarter cup of all-purpose flour half teaspoon of garlic salted powder in a lot of my cooking I use a lot of garlic powder and if you like to purchase one this big container from Superstore I think it was about five bucks the price may be slightly higher because this one I purchased it six months ago and you can buy them from any supermarket after you're going to whisk and combine all the ingredients together with these two ingredients is what going to make the chicken super crispy when we fry them and next I will show you a really simple way on how you can make the crispy chicken here is the chicken that we marinate about 40 minutes to make a really delicious and tasty fried chicken the chicken should be marinated this way for at least half an hour or overnight before you start to put in the flour you're going to stir it this way like I do to fry a really crispy chicken you're going to just add the flour straight to the chicken the method that I'm showing you is super easy to follow. You're going to add half of the flour that we mixed. You can use a really firm stirring stick to combine the flour and the chicken together. With this first coat, the chicken is going to grab to the flour lightly. And to allow the chicken to grab into the flour more, you're going to sprinkle some water on it. You're going to sprinkle some water and after you're going to add the rest of the flour in. And if you want to put less flour, you can do so. You can adjust to your liking. It may not look like there is much flour that going to grab on the chicken, but don't worry, this way it will fry the chicken super crispy. There is another way that I used to do, but I didn't like that method comparing to this one because this one I find the chicken when you fry them is more crispy comparing to the one that you mix the batter and dip the chicken in and then fry them. And to make sure that the flour it will grab onto the chicken, you're going to sprinkle a little bit more uh, water and that should be good. Mix and combine everything together so the chicken and the flour should look kind of like muddy and after that you can fry the chicken. And by the time we are finishing with this process, the cooking oil that we preheat should be hot enough for us to fry the chicken. When you are ready to fry the chicken, you want to make sure that you drop the basket into the hot oil. This way, when the chicken is finished frying and done cooking, when you pour it out from the basket, it will not stuck to the basket. If you don't have a deep fry, you could also use a normal frying pan. Put generous amount of cooking oil in the frying pan and after you're going to cook it on medium high heat. After you put half of the chicken in, you're going to close it and cook it for 10 to 11 minutes. Depending on what kind of deep fry you have, you may take longer to cook the chicken and you may take shorter time. For this one, it take me 10 minutes. Now this first batch is done and you can fry the second batch. And here is the second batch of our fried chicken. It's all done and crispy. 
And by the time we are finishing with frying this chicken, the daikon chicken soup should also be finished. After 20 minutes on medium heat, we're going to turn off the heat and next we're going to add the green onions. You always want to add the green onion last when you turn off the heat so this way the green onion remain fresh and make the soup taste super delicious. And that is all to it on how you can prepare simple and delicious three dishes for less than $10. To make this big pot of daikon chicken soup, it cost about $3.25 Canadian and you can eat it three times. And with our daikon carrot salad, it cost about $1 Canadian and you can eat it two times to three times. And for this crispy fried chicken, it cost about $5 Canadian and it can feed three adults and three children. I hope this video is easy and simple enough for you to follow so you can make some delicious Asian meals for you and your family at home for less. And if you liking what you see, don't forget to like, share with your family and friends. If today is your first time here, don't forget to press the subscribe button for more delicious homemade recipes. And if you don't want to miss any of my future videos, don't forget to press the notification bell so you get notified for all my future videos. Okay, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye for now.